Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Matt and I am glad that you're with me. We're going to be creating something for your medieval sword. Uh, if you're a sword collector or have a sword, maybe you've looked online to find out what it would cost to cover that sword in a scabbard. There are some amazing scabbard makers out there. They do a really great job, but the downside is that they cost so much. So you can spend anywhere from $500 to $1,000 and up on a good scabbard. Um, and that is in some ways, or for some people, cost prohibitive. So uh, you can actually make your own. And if you haven't tried to do that, or if you're thinking about trying, or just want to see what that would be like, I have put together a tutorial, basically, where I go through the process from the beginning to the end. Um, and we want it to look a little bit like this. This is... Uh, the last scabbard that I made and uh, basically the construction is going to be the exact same. The stitching will try to improve upon a little bit as well as making this a little narrower. And so we want to create something like that. The first thing you'll need is some leather and two poplar scales and your sword of course and then also some supplies. I'm going to be leaving some links in the description on both the scabbard makers if you want to go ahead and just skip the video because you have the funds to buy the scabbard that's great so I'll leave links to my favorite scabbard makers as well as where you can get these supplies so let's go ahead and get started here there are so many different options what I'm gonna do is just show you uh, what I've done in the past so you take your two scales your poplar scales and you trace the sword you need to be as precise as possible and uh, and then once you've got that outside shape, you'll need to create a shape outside of your sword where the two halves are going to meet and be glued. And uh, after you've got that, you'll need to cut these shapes out. So cut the bigger shape out. And then the next thing you'll need to do is take gouges or chisels and uh, clean out the inside, get that all removed, and then you'll sand that out. And then you'll take the two halves and glue them together. Um, leave them glued overnight. After you've done that, you're going to be ready to seal it. You need to seal the wood so that uh, moisture isn't uh, absorbed from the, uh, the leather. If you just leave it on there over, over a period of time, the leather will dry out uh, because the wood will absorb that moisture. So you want to make sure that you seal off the wood. And I'll leave a link in the description on what I'm using there fits very snugly. In fact, once I get it to about here, it's difficult to get the sword in. It means we've got a very tight fit. And uh, this guard dips down just a little bit, so I cut it out a little bit there, just to give it some extra room to breathe there. And we could hold this upside down. That sword is not going anywhere. The next thing you want to do is take cord, or I've taken these leather straps or thongs, and cut them out and we're going to glue them. And, um, and then glue these so you're gonna have basically some risers. So just like a sword handle has risers often, uh, these have risers to keep the belt in place. Uh, two belts, technically. And then you'll glue these down this glue dries very quickly and you don't want to get it on your hands it's hard to get off once you've got that make sure you clean up any extra mess and then we're going to take the pattern which is uh, just a piece of paper that you cut out it will cover uh, the scabbard the core and then once you've got that, that uh, pattern you're ready to cut that out of the leather so you'll trace that onto the leather with a pencil cut it out and uh, it's going to be really stiff at first. It's really not pliable, um, which is why you have the paper pattern. So to get that to be pliable, you'll need to dunk it into water. And that's what I've got this basin here for. As soon as you dunk it into the water, it becomes very soft, it's supple. It's easy to manipulate. And you'll need to be careful because any marks that you leave in the leather will be more or less permanent. Uh, so watch out for fingernail marks scratches, scrapes, but at this point you can actually mold the leather around the risers 
and use your fingers to press those down so that the risers are sort of accentuated underneath the leather. And this is one of my favorite parts, just doing that, forming that leather. And then we're going to be uh, sewing this all up. So we're going to use a single piece of string with needles on both ends. And uh, we'll crisscross back and forth, starting at the throat. Some people like to start at the tip, I understand, but uh, I, I prefer to start at the throat uh, for some reason. I feel like it's easier that way. And we'll just work down. Try to keep these as even as possible. I didn't actually measure. You could poke the holes first if you want to, but I've used the awl uh, just to help me out along the way as I go down. And you'll want to keep the leather pretty moist, so that's why I've got the sponge there. So every once in a while I'll uh, wet it down, make sure it's staying moist. If you need to leave the project, um, you want to keep that project pretty moist. You don't want to dry it out because it does become firm, and uh, there's some shrinking as well. So if you need to put it in a bag, if you need to take some time, uh, take a break, I would recommend putting it in an uh, airtight bag if possible. And when you get down to the tip, you'll want to tie that off. Uh, there are some shapes that I have, um, but these are a little too early, so I'm going to set those aside. When the scabbard dries, it's a lighter color, sort of a khaki. It's very pretty. Uh, and it's going to be ready for the dye. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, I tried so hard to find a good tutorial on the web, and I really couldn't. I didn't find anything but Peter Johnson's drawings. Uh, if you search the web for medieval scabbards, you'll probably come across Peter Johnson's drawings. It's like a one or two page tutorial with some pictures, but it does lack dimensions. I'm not planning on leaving any dimensions with you here. I feel like uh, it might be a good idea just to give it a try with um, maybe a pattern, see if it works. If you do need my dimensions, I can provide those. But I wanted to show you how it all comes together. And that part right there is especially difficult, or it was when I was trying to figure out how this worked, going between them and underneath. And then when it goes around the back, it actually slides through the back of the belt. Uh, it's just a little bit complicated, but it makes sense. It's in a way sort of ingenious because it does tightly tie together. And when you get this all tied, and it looks okay. It won't actually be tied, but it, you know, it's, it's sort of prepped and ready to go. I'm going to dye it at this point. I don't know exactly what order... Uh, the professionals do this whether they put this together and then dye it or dye it first, but in my limited experience, it seems like this is the right time to add the dye. So I've chosen mahogany for the scabbard and um, for the belt, British tan, which is a reddish color. I think they're both beautiful. Now, I had some trouble with the mahogany because it did leave a lot of streaks. It required several different coats. Uh, maybe I should have used a thicker sponge, a larger sponge, and maybe a basin. Um, but did leave some streaks. When I finally put on the, the sheen, or the sort of it's like a polish, it's a leather finish, uh, it does seem to blend everything a little bit better, but you'll notice also that it's a bit darker than uh, what it looked like before the finish was added. The back's a little bit splotchy. It doesn't yet have the, uh, the finish on it, and you can see that um, it's, uh, the belt's pretty red. And there's a tricky part in the front here. You have to pull up the center um, to put these pieces together. But first, I make a hole through that side of the belt and lay it down. Put a hole uh, beneath it on the actual scabbard. And then we're going to pull it through. That part is a struggle. I didn't include it because it just took too long to actually take care of that part. So I think it's sort of obvious you know, the way I did that. I'm not going to include it there. But uh, you can see here, finishing up here, pulling the straps over. Anytime you have to put a hole in the scabbard and pull those things through, it can be difficult, it can be a little bit frustrating. 
I use these tools. These wooden tools are actually for pottery making, but I find them to be pretty useful. I've got a number of different shapes, and uh, they were so cheap, so it's something you might want to pick up. And then we need to work on the back as well. The back is made up of a couple of parts here. We're threading the, the leather straps through these uh, holes. When we pull it all tight, it is actually very tight. Now it's easy to scar the leather accidentally, so put down a cloth anytime I have to work on top of the leather. And it can be pretty difficult to get these to pull through, but in the same way, they're very tight once they do, which is a good thing. And then I've used the punch to put some holes in there. And I'm going to use another thong or, or strap to, uh, to finish that side of the belt. And then once it's all tied up there, we'll want to uh, get the die out again. Try to even things up a little bit here. So here it is. This is what we've got to show for the time that we spent. Um, now obviously it needs a shape and a buckle and we'll have to put that together and I'll likely upload a follow-up to show you what that looks like. But you know, you can save some money doing this yourself and uh, it really didn't take much time. So I really appreciate you watching and if you found the video interesting or useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have your support that way, and I'll see you later.